day to you. My name is Mike Addison, and I'm representing Adsure FSP15269. Okay, so today I'm going to speak a little bit about geezers uh, from an owner's perspective, just to give a little bit of background. We have quite a lot of material on this YouTube channel, so please, you know, have a look. Um, we have a full uh, one-hour presentation on geezers, which is quite comprehensive, and a lot of research went into that one. And then we have another 30 Q&As, a little one-minute or two-minute Q&As, so plenty of geezer information. So in this summary, I'm just going to go through some basic stuff for owners when it comes down to a claim. Okay, so I think we start off with what the rules say. Um, if you look at um, Prescribed Management Rule 31 in the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, it says something quite interesting. It says that notwithstanding that a water heating system forms part of the common property and is insured by the body corporate, a member, that's the owner, must maintain, repair, and where necessary, replace such installation that serves that member section. Okay, so basically it says that even though it's insured for normal perils, an owner must still maintain, and that includes and repair, and where necessary, replace. So that would imply that, in fact, the owner should be just repairing and replacing their geyser as and when it, it breaks down or when it's kaput. And we all know that geysers these days that come with three-year or five-year warranties generally, and, you know, after its useful life, they need to be replaced. The insurance companies, however, for a long historical, and I'm not going to go into the history of it today, but for good reasons, they've actually introduced geysers, um, as a, and they've included a little section in the policy, which is not usually actually in line with, with normal insurance principles, but they will maintain the geyser for you. In other words, from the point of view when, when something is wrong. So, for example, if there's a new element that's needed or the geyser needs to be replaced because of wear and tear, the insurance company are actually replacing and repairing geysers for owners. Just always remember, though, strictly speaking, it shouldn't be there. And so, therefore, the point I'm making is I consider geyser insurance in the sectional title environment to actually be bonus insurance. That's when they're repairing geysers and replacing geysers. Okay, so insurance companies moved to this for good reason, uh, mainly so that they could actually manage the geezer claims. Uh, they don't have to send loss adjusters out to say no every time. They rather throw it in under certain conditions. And actually, it's had a very good impact, provided that these things have been managed properly. <clears throat> so the insurance companies do what they do is they impose a limit so it, the, for a typical for a 150 liter geyser right now a, a, a limit would be between eight and a half and say nine thousand nine and a half thousand rand is the more recent type of limits that the insurance companies are providing and uh, plumbers that work with the call centers can well with you know install 150 liter geysers generally within those limits and a typical excess for a geyser anything from two thousand to three and a half thousand rand depending on that particular scheme's claims ratio if uh you know you've got to keep the premiums down if you want to keep the premiums down then the excesses are there a little bit to manage it and we can find a balance do take a look at our um uh, a little uh, clip on claims ratio. The claims ratio uh, video will actually give you some more insight into how claims ratio affects things. Okay, so um, <clears throat> when you look at a hot water cylinder or a geyser, um, the, the, the insurance companies will consider the tank itself generally to be a geyser, and the insurance companies will cover usually the components and pipes up to one meter on either side of the geyser tank. So you've got your tank, um, and then they will cover on either side. However, interpretation by most experts over the years, not always so, some of them change their minds, but generally the feeling is, is that where the hot water, where the cold water enters the tank, um, and then 
where it um, and then all the way to the tap or the device in the house is part of the hot water system. Okay, so the hot water installation is deemed where the cold water enters the tank and then where it exits into the bath or shower and so on. Okay, so that has been the general train of thought over the years. And there's a little diagram, as you can see, that indicates the red area uh, indicating the, the, the owner's um, responsibility and the cold water pipe end coming up up until it uh, would be the non-part of the geyser. Okay, so uh, you know, how would you know what is covered and what isn't covered? Well, very typically, um, the the geyser itself, as I said, the tank and all of the components within one meter. Uh, there are one or two little exclusions. For example, uh, the anode, which is a self-sacrificing device. Insurance companies don't repair. That's something that you just need to replace yourself when it's worn out. Um, and they also won't pay for isolator switches generally, that being deemed part of the electrical reticulation. Some of the insurance companies will throw it in here and there, but actually it's not usually part of the geyser. And also anything on your DB board, uh, it's far away from the geyser. Okay, so your geyser, the tank, the element, the thermostats, the bits and bobs, the valves and things that are uh, around your geyser. When they go, the insurance company will usually cover it. So very typically, as I said, a 150-litre geyser usually insured. I try to these days now in 2023 because of the steel price increases last year. I'm trying to get limits around the 900,500 rand mark. And of course, we try and negotiate the lowest excess possible. But very typically, you know, a 2,000 or a 2,500 rand excess on a 9,500 rand geyser limit. We should cover you well enough with a... 150 litre geyser. So be careful when you negotiate with a plumber. I always recommend trying to use the insurance company's call center, and then you're usually well within the limits. For repairs, the limits are a range usually between 1,500. I'm trying to get them up to 2,000 Rand these days, and they usually come with a small excess of 250 or 500 Rand. Okay. Um, Ideally, we try not to have excess for those because it's a little bit of a fiddle sometimes to have a 250 rand excess on a small clan. It's very much um, uh, uh, depends on your policy and the insurance company that you're with and your claims ratio. Always remember that. So does the age of a geezer matter? Well, the age of the geezer does matter because if it's over the five-year warranty period, then it's insured. But before the warranty period, within the warranty period, the um, insurance company will not. It's actually effectively not covered. It's covered by your manufacturer. So the insurance companies are only really interested in geezers that are out of warranty. Also, some insurers actually even have a sliding scale where the older the geezer is, uh, they, they drop the limit because they feel the geezer is busy aging. But the insurance companies that I mainly work with just have a flat limit. If the geezer is 20 years old and now it's kaput, you get your 9,500 Rand geezer installed. Again, I do urge you to use the call centers because where you use the call centers, particularly the call centers like CIA, will actually be more lenient. Um, if you have a warranty geezer and it needs to be installed, even though... Uh, it's under warranty. Uh, the manufacturer might drop the geyser off outside the gate, and then somebody has to install it still. Um, some of the some of the insurers, as long as you're using the call center, will consider um, allowing a subsidy. In other words, they will treat that as a repair. So if your repair limit is 1,500 rand, they might throw that in for you. Okay, up to that amount. Okay, so the limits are, are very typically. You know, just say a geezer uh, costs 11,000 Rand, say your plumber charges 11, and we can't dictate what plumbers can charge. They can charge what they like for geezers. It's between you and the plumber that you engage with. So let's just say one costs 11,000 and the limit is nine and a half. Um, the geezer excess is two and a half. You can see very quickly there in the little calculation I'm showing you on the screen that the insurer will settle the claim for 7,000 Rand. So don't be upset. You cost 11,000 Rand, but you're only getting seven. 
just try and watch out who you're using. Uh, get quotes, but I urge you, if you're using the call centers, um, those are pre-negotiated and you're usually within the limit. I've even seen that the, some of the insurance companies have still got fairly low limits, like eight, 8,000 and 8,500, and they're still meeting those limits, believe it or not, on a 150-liter geyser. Okay, the same principle will apply to a maintenance claim. So if the plumber's invoice is for 1850 and the limit is 1500 and the excess is 250, you would be settled 1250 rand. Okay. Now the question is who would pay for that excess? Okay, the excess being the first amount payable. Well, in sectional title, there's a rule 23.2, uh, which um, states that, so by default, that's assuming you're using the default rules then the uh, geezer is normally paid for, sorry, the excess is normally paid for by the owner. Why? The owner, 23.2 says, states that the owner um, pays, well, whoever is responsible to maintain an area is responsible to actually pay. So if we look at rule 23.2, it says that um, whoever is responsible to maintain a certain area or part of the building would be responsible to pay the excess on that. So rule 31 makes the owner responsible to maintain. Therefore, it follows in terms of 23.2 that the owner would be responsible for the geezer excess. Okay, so always remember that. All right. Um, then, of course... Submitting your claim, that's another story. Just be very careful. You know, what we suggest is make sure that all the information, you know, the frustrating thing is, is if you send in half-baked information, it, it, it just causes queries and comebacks and nobody gets paid and the claim drags on. And so we've got a little four point, uh, uh, points here that you should adhere to if you want your claim played quickly. So get the plumber's invoice with, with, with a few good details on it. Make sure that the plumber's invoice um, itemizes the parts that we used. Um, you know, you don't just say replace the geezer. You know, 150 quick hot XYZ model geezer was replaced. You know, 5,000 rand. Labor, 3,000 rand. You know, spare part of whatever the description is, you know, 1,500 rand and total it up. Then the insurance company can see uh, that it's, that it's, you know, reasonable. Uh, details and serial number of the old geezer and details and serial number of the new geezer. Why do we need that? Well, why does the insurer need that? They just want to check from the serial number they can tell how old it is and whether it should have been under warranty. Uh, before and after photographs are always ideal. Take a before photograph and an after photograph. Before, you can see that there was, in fact, damage and everything was completely out, even video clips. And then after photographs with the new tags can prove that everything was done and everything is done properly. Certificate of compliance where required. Um, if you're using the Giza call centers again, the insurance companies are not necessarily so strict because the insurance company are taking responsibility for the workmanship because they installed the Giza. So, you know, where you've got the insurance company involved, that's fine through their call centers. But when you're using your own plumber, Try and get a COC just to satisfy the insurance that the job was done properly. Um, and then detailed quotations or invoices for any resulting damages. You know, and it's no good just saying, oh, my ceiling was damaged. Well, how big is the ceiling? What area of the ceiling needs to repair? Do they need to paint it? You know, what area needs to be repainted? How, how many meters of corners do they need? How many square meters of ceiling board, rider board, you know, et cetera? Okay, so just be more descriptive with the resultant damages and then, of course, submit it as soon as possible via the managing agent, the claim, and uh, obviously with a signed claim form. Okay, so then, you know, a question that often arises that owners have is, can I upgrade my geezer to stainless steel, for example, or maybe put solar in or whatever? The insurance companies are usually pretty okay. This is your quote for a normal replacement, and then you also provide a quote for your upgrade and then the difference you would pay. That's usually easily negotiable and easily handled. 
and obviously much easier handled if it's done through the um, insurance company's call center. Uh, we think it's a good idea to always upgrade to stainless steel when you can. You know, stainless steel geysers are going to last for a very, very long time. They even <clears throat> have guarantees, warranties up until 10 years. But, you know, I, I believe that the stainless steel are going to, uh, geysers are going to last much longer. Um, with the current five year warranty geysers, you know, I'm not saying that they all pop after five years, but, you know, let's face it, five years, five years, five years. I'd rather have 10 years or 20 year geyser and, uh, and I'd rather pay an extra 2,000 rand to make sure that my geyser's there for a long time. Okay, so, yeah, I recommend upgrading to stainless steel where possible. Or copper, there are some, there's a manufacturer of copper geysers also somewhere around. Then, um, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the insurance settlement, I think that's just one thing to be mindful of. Please, as an owner, don't ask for cash in lieu settlements and that you're going to get your own guy to do it and things like that. If you are going to get your own guy and you get it done cheaper, then the payout must be less. It's it's really that simple. But uh, legislation requires that the uh, insurance company pay the money into the body corporate's bank account. They're actually supposed to pay it even into the reserve fund but that's really not practical. So they must pay it to the body corporate's bank account. And the body corporate can only pay you as an owner if you've already had the job done and you can produce the proof of payment. Okay, there's a particular section in the Act, in the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, Section 3.1J to be specific. And it's to make sure that uh, any monies received from insurance are actually applied to reinstatement. In these hard times, people are often tempted uh, to use the money for something else. Oh, I've got a much more important issue to spend this 9,000 Rand on than I will think I'll have summertime. I think I'll go with cold water for a while. I'll bite the bullet. So we, we can't have that. The, the buildings, I always say that we have, the buildings have internal bleeding if repairs aren't done and then a new owner comes along and, uh, you know, in the secondary damage and a future event now we've got a mix up between what wasn't repaired and what was damaged this time. All sorts of complications. Very strict claim and he gets paid for jobs done or to the contractor. Okay, and I think that pretty much wraps it. Um, as I said, please uh, subscribe uh, to this video, subscribe to our channel. Um, we want to do lots more videos um, and the more popular it is, the more we want to support it. And of course, much more on geysers. As I said, there's 30 good questions. There's probably all your burning questions are probably there somewhere. And a one hour explanation more about the stainless steel geyser, uh, all about the different components and so forth. And you can see that right here at one of the previous videos. Thank you very much.